today we're going to be talking about my wrap up for February. February is a shorter month so it didn't give me a ton of books. I did end up reading three books and started another one. I also got the majority of the way through a book called Invested and that was through an audio version. So I'm going to leave that one out although it pretty much is almost done. By the end of February it was done. I just wanted to finish the book that I started in February which is Third Girl. You guys will learn a little bit more about that in another video. But for this video we're just going to talk about the three I actually read for the month of February. So the first one I finished is Because You're Mine by Colleen Coble. It was a first to me ever of her books that I read. I rated it 3.5 stars um, on Goodreads. Unfortunately, they don't have a 0.5 star system, so it looks like a three star, but really it's almost a four. And I thought it was like a really good adult contemporary fiction, which I don't read a ton of, and I liked it a lot. The only negative thing that I found was that it was extremely predictable. I, I knew what was happening. I knew what was gonna happen in the end anyways. And for me, that was just too predictable. I read it as an audiobook and the person doing the audio had like the Irish inflections in her voice throughout the story and it was quite fun to hear that. It was really unique and it made me, it kept me engaged. So that was really nice. It was a great reminder of being a mom of how fierce your instinct is to protect your children and she definitely had that. This was a mother <laughs> trying to protect her family and doing whatever it takes even putting herself in dangerous way and you know to do that to make sure that she and her family are okay she was a little naive and didn't really take the time out to think about her options uh, i think she could have chose better options but she just did whatever she could in that moment and you can't judge somebody for that. They may not have been aware that there was other options. She was also trying to find her family history. And I've noticed that play out in the story was quite intriguing and it kept you engaged to kind of find out more of what the background story is of her, coupled with a sort of mystery that was happening and um, unanswered things that were going on in the storyline. Overall, it was actually a good story. I really enjoyed it. Even though it was a little predictable, it was still really good. <laughs> the second book I read was a memoir style book. I mean, really getting into nonfiction. I'm currently working on my own nonfiction book, and so I really like to read other people's works just to get inspiration, but also just to see what I like and what I don't like in nonfiction so that I know as a writer and a reader how I want to present my stuff in my own books. So I read My Part-Time Paris Life by Lisa Anselmo. It's a secular book, it's not Christian, and I also just wanted to see her take on it. I did rate it a two star. It's a memoir highlighting a journey and it was based on codependency of her mother and her that ushered her into this new life and the growing pains of that in this new and beautiful Parisian style living, which I really enjoyed. I loved seeing the glimpse into Paris life. A lot of us aren't able to travel right now because of restrictions that are on us. It's difficult, it's not an easy time in our world, it's very challenging. I just really wanted to pick up a book that kind of highlighted some of the things that I'm missing in traveling and I really want to experience. So I was hoping that it would give that to me and it did in glimpses. It wasn't 100% of what I was hoping for in the book and that's again the reflection of two stars but then again it's this is subjective because this is her life and she's pouring it out and I so appreciated that. I appreciated her experiences of independence and just really breaking free from some of the relationship issues she was having. It kind of gave her this freedom to pump her wings and kind of almost renew herself again and have this new life. I lost interest in the book though and that is a huge problem to why I also rated it two stars. It was interesting enough but by chapter 12 I was just kind of skimming and this was even with the audiobook like I just kept skipping and skipping and skipping and I didn't really feel like I missed anything and that says something. So a lot of the stuff that she was saying was kind of repetitive and by chapter 12 things I thought we had grown from 
almost kind of kept coming back and so it just wasn't a great educational book and it wasn't a great motivational book. It was inspiring for where she was and the experience she was having in Paris. And for that, I appreciated the book. That's about all I have to say about that book. <laughs> the cover is really cute though. Next book was this one. I have this as a buddy read with Celestria. This was so cool. So I have wanted to read this book for a very long time. I noticed on Goodreads that Celestria picked it up. It's Vigilante by Robin Parrish, and I had never read one of his books, but the cover, I mean the cover, this thing is beautiful. The graphic design on this is incredible. This is an action-packed, politically intriguing novel, and it totally reminded me of like a Marvel DC smash up with Winter Soldier and Batman with all the cool gadgets in a Batcave. That literally is the feel of this novel. <laughs> so Vigilante follows a ex-marine who's incredibly talented in martial arts, basically decides to take on the world to bring justice back. So I think the author really liked his gadgets because there was like almost two pages worth of gadgets that I lost interest in. As any non-gadget reader would. <laughs> Besides that, it was really engaging. I think this book was really relevant to me, especially given the times we're in right now with the world dynamic and the political polarization or just, just the world right now that we're living in. It is thought provoking. It makes you think. And it was really at the perfect time to read this book, I would say. That definitely is my feel about this book. It was like the perfect time to read it. And it reminded me of the scripture verse because lawlessness was abounding in this. Like it was definitely lawlessness everywhere and he was the only one he felt like was standing up for justice, was standing up to make a change, was trying to be the hero. And it reminded me of the scripture verse, I just found it, Matthew 24, 12. And it says, and because lawlessness will increase, the love of many will grow cold. And it just, this book was very thought provoking. Let's just say that. It was extremely thought provoking. It made me think, it made me reflect on what was happening in the world today. And it was a really good book. Was it believable that one person could take on all of this? Maybe not, <laughs> but it was otherwise really good. And the cool part about this book is that there is major diversity in this one. And I love that about this book so, so much. I have a mixed family. I don't know if you guys know that. I have a mixed family. And when I see these things, my heart goes pitter patter. I am very proud of the writers that do this and I love it because it, it just, it gives a place and a voice to it. And I just, I really love that about writers who incorporate all different ethnicities in their writing. The other thing that I thought was really cool is the main character is disfigured. He represents to me a lot of people with disability and he ends up being the hero. And I, as a person with disability of dyslexia, that is more of an internal one. It's not as physical and you feel disabilities all sorts of different kind of ways. But what I loved about this was it, it was the hero. This person was the hero in the end. And I just, I absolutely adored that. This was almost saying like there needs to be a hero standing up and he, his visage was marred almost like Jesus was in a sense. So that I found really intriguing. I don't think this is a Jesus type, but I think that it just made you reflect on Jesus and what he has done for us. And, um, how his visage was marred more than any man. And he was the one who took the place. He is our hero. It made me think of that. And because of that, I really like this book. I think I gave it four out of five stars. But otherwise, it was really fun to read with Celestia. To be honest with you, because it took me so much to get into it for the first 80 pages, I probably wouldn't have read it if I didn't have her as a buddy read. So I'm actually really happy that I did buddy read it with her and we were able to get through this book together because I did really like it in the end. So yeah. Then I started some books in February, but I didn't finish them. So I'm not going to add them into this wrap up, but I probably will have quite a bit more books in March because of that very reason is they were on the cusp of finishing, but I just didn't get to them for this wrap up. 
I hope you guys are having an amazing time and I will see you in the next video where I am talking about how I solved an Agatha Christie book being an author. Bye! Now, obviously, technically, with all the books, I probably could have said I read four. Again, like I said, it's not a huge deal, and I don't really care too much about that. But let's talk about the books I did read. I read as a relationship and all sorts of types of... Um... 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 Mm-hmm.